Okay, so we got Mendelian genetics, monohybrid versus dihybrid crosses. So, let's go over our quick vocab terms. Monohybrid and dihybrid. Let's dissect those and understand what they mean. So, not the car I'm looking for. Sorry, looking for color. Would we'll word We'll do purple. Okay, monohybrid. It is a genetic cross between one trait so as you can see here with a mono hybrid it only has one trait involved so with our mono hybrid punnett square it will only give you the probability of let's say tall versus short but with a dihybrid, hybrid it's a genetic cross between two traits. So if a dihybrid cross, our Punnett square is significantly bigger because it accounts for two traits. So let's start with the simple ones, our monohybrids. So we're going to write our parental cross And let's keep the tall versus short. So over here, we're going to write big T as tall and little t as short. So let's say we have a homozygous recessive crossed with a heterozygous. So, on the top, on the top here, in this part, you're going to put your first set of alleles. So, little t, little t. Over here, you're going to put your second set of alleles, big t, little t. Then when you're filling in your Punnett square, a good thing to know, you always put the dominant allele first. So here, even though the little t's are on top, the big t's will still be first. So after you have everything filled in, you get your probabilities. So... So what we're going to do now is we're going to write our probabilities for the genotypes and phenotypes. Let's use pink. So, geno, and remember, our genotypes are the alleles. They are kind of like the code. So, we're going to come over here we're gonna say okay we have two big t little t's out of the four so 50 percent heterozygous big t little t then we can cross those out and then with our remaining two they are also the same they are homozygous recessive little t little t So you can cross that out and then over here using our knowledge about recessive dominant dominant and recessive we can say okay this is dominant so 50 percent tall and we can see this is recessive 
So 50% short. So now let's start with our dye hybrid. Okay, our dye hybrid, remember, these code for two gene, two traits. So let's keep a tall, big T tall, little T short, but now we're going to add another gene. So let me move this up. So now let's do another gene. Let's say we have um, big G is green and little g is yellow. So our two traits that this pennant square will show is the probabilities for being tall or short and the probabilities of being green skinned or yellow skinned. Okay, so let's write our parental cross. Okay, our parental cross is going to be a homozygous, let's, I'm trying to think, okay, so our cross now, I have it written down after I've thought about it, let's see if I can make this go down, Ooh, yes, that's much better. It will be nice and personal with my hands. Okay, so parent A is heterozygous tall and heterozygous green. Our parent B is heterozygous tall and homozygous recessive yellow. So now we need to fill in our tops with parent A. So we're going to do this by taking one trait from each allele pair. So, these two are each going to be in a box. Pretend like they're in a box. You need one trait from each box. You need to make sure you use this trait with both of them, combining them. So, what that means, you're going to take your big T and use your little g, big G. Then, you're going to use the same T, but since you already used this big G, you're going to go to the little g gonna write big T little g so now you're done with this T now you go to the little t so you write your little t here you have not used this little big G with your little t you used it with your big T already but you don't but that doesn't mean anything anymore because you haven't used it with a little t yet so you write the big G and then you go little t you already used your big G, so little g. So little t, little g. So now, I'm going to come over here. Do the same thing. You have your big T and your little g. So you're going to do big T, little g. Big T, you already use this little g, so you have to go to the other little g. Now go to the little t, you haven't used the little g with the little t, so little t, little g. And then you go back to the little t, you already use this little g, so you go to the other little g. So now you can start crossing. Some tricks that I found that make it a little less complicated is you go in order of how it would show in the allele set. So, this big T would come first since it's dominant. So, all the way down, you're going to write big T. Now, you go to the other parent, and you see you have two, two more big T's here. But little t's here. 
and then you repeat with a big G, you know it's going to be dominant, so you can go ahead and safely put it here first. And then you have all little g's over here, so you put little g all the way down. Now, you have big T, and that big T is down all the way, because it's dominant. So you know it safely goes first. Now you have, now you do the other T's, you know these two are also dominant. But you go to these little t's. Now, you go with your little g's. You have all little g's. So still, just go one at a time. Take it slow. Okay, so you're done with two now. Now you move over here. Since this is a little t, you need to check... Okay, I'm sorry my video keeps cutting in. I have bad memory on my phone. I have too many pictures. But anywho. So, come here. See that you have a little T. So now you have to come over here to see if you have any big T's. You do. So you come over here. And you look. I do have big T's. So I'm coming and writing these T's first. So you have big T. Big T, little T, little T. And you do this so you make sure the big T, the dominant allele, always is written in the first spot correctly the first time. Now you can come write your little T's all the way down. Now you do the same thing with your G. You see you have a big G. So you write big G all the way down. And... You have little g's all the way down. So little g, little g, little g, little g. Now, same thing here. You have a little t. You have big t's. So you write the big t's first. And then you can write your other little t's from up here. And then since we already know we have little g's all the way down, we can go ahead and write our little g's two times and while you're doing this make sure you go slow so you do it right because it would suck getting to square 15 and then realize oh crap I messed up square 6 so now we're going to write our genotypes you always write since you now have a die hybrid, you're going to do the big thing. So you're going to come over here. You're going to see you have a... You're going to see that you have a big T, big T, big G, little g. And you're going to see if that comes up anywhere else. And you cross that out because you've already used it. And you see, ooh, I have that combination here as well. You're going to cross that one out also. And then you look. Oop, I don't have any more big T, big T, big G, little g. So you're going to come over here. And this time, since fractions aren't, since, sorry, percents aren't as easy, you're going to want to do a fraction. So you have 16 boxes, and two of them fit this allele code so you're going to write one out of eight because you want the simplest fraction so now you're going to come over here you have big t little t big g little g so as you can see there's another big t little t big g little g over here you're going to cross that one out but then you also have them over here Big T, little t, big G, little g. Big T, little g. Big T, little t, big G, little g. And then you look. We do not have that anywhere else. So since we have 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 4 out of 16. 
or when you simplify, one fourth. Now you come over here, big T, big T, little g, little g. I'm gonna write that here. And then you count big T, big T, little g, little g, two. And we don't have that where anyone else. So again, since it's two, that's one eighth. Because we're simplifying our fractions. Now we come here. Big T, little t, little g, little g. You have that again here. That's one, two. Big T, little t, little g, little g. Big T, little t, little g, little g. I wrote these two wrong. These are both little t's. Whoops. Sorry for the confusion. So we have one, two, three, four that fit that allele pair. So again, that's one fourth. We start a new row. We have little t, little t, little, big g, little g. You see that again here, so that's one eighth. Then you come over here with your final one, little t, little t, little g, little g, and you have one eighth yet again. And then when you're all done, go ahead and make sure your fractions all add up. So you got your one fourth and one fourth, that equals half. These one eighths equal fourth. These one eighths equal a fourth, two fourths equal a half, and two halves equal a whole, so you know you did it all right. So now, you gotta come over here and do your phenotypes. So, your phenotypes could be, I'm gonna abbreviate it, so, actually... We'll make it work. Okay. So, we got a tall and a green. And you got a short and a green. But you also got short green. No, oh, no, I'm sorry. You got a short plus yellow. And a tall plus yellow. I did that weird, but like what you did with your allele pairing over here, you could do tall green, write it down, tall yellow, write it down, short green, write it down, short yellow, write it down. I did it weird, but that's okay. So now, we're going to come over here, we see that we have a tall and a green, so that's one eighth, then a tall and a green, that's one fourth, so that's two plus a four, that's six sixteenths, so we got six sixteenths, which is equal to three eighths. So now, when we go to tall and yellow, we see tall, yellow, tall, yellow. That's another eighth and a fourth. So it's going to be the six sixteenths again, and three eighths. Now you come over here, short and green. You see we have a short and green here, so that's one eighth. Two out of 16, one eighth. And then finally, we got a short and a yellow, two recessive. That's two sixteenths, or one eighth. And again, you can check our fractions that equal whole. 
3 plus 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 1 is 8, 8. So that's how you get the phenotypes and genotypes. If you have, if you have any questions or you need more clarification, please let me know.